Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and in today's video, we want to talk about a question from the SmartSuite community from Rudy, who asked a great question about building a staff scheduling or rotational planner, and he uploaded a screenshot of an Excel document that he used to use when he was planning this for other people. And he was curious, just is there anything that's been built out inside of that community? So of course, uh, we're always one to take on the challenge. And the first person who responded was Brian, who works for SmartSuite. And I love that Brian is always quick to respond and solve things and really good at taking exactly what a client wants to help build and make that for them. So to take a look at Brian's approach here, he created uh, a single app here for Rudy's Weekly Planner. And in this app, we're tracking all of the employees. And then we've got information about each of the shifts here. And this keeps really true to the form of what Rudy set up. Now, for each of these shifts, we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all the days. And then we can see we've got a multi-select here where we have the kitchen and we've got the times for that. And these are actually values that you would see in the dropdown for the multi-select. And then from there, it's doing some calculations on the back end with formulas to be able to get the number of hours they work, multiply it across an hourly rate, and then also get their total pay. So this is a great solution in terms of keeping it very true to the nature of the Excel spreadsheet. Pretty easy to be able to then replicate these for future weeks. We can see that this is grouped by that week that we have here. And, you know, in this process, I thought, well, this would be fun to kind of take it as a challenge and see if there's other ways to think through this process as well, how I would typically approach it. And I really like, again, what Brian has done here in terms of the simplicity and ease of use. And to be fair, the solution I came up with it has a little bit more complexity to it. But that being said, I also think the power of SmartSuite is being able to have that full relational database. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, if databases are kind of new to you, typically we think of apps storing one type of record data. That we don't take all of our data and combine it together like we typically would inside of a spreadsheet. Spreadsheets are great for having any arbitrary number of columns and rows, and you can shift it how you want. You can have multiple data types for each. There's no really enforcement of that data. And so it gives you flexibility in terms of the visual presentation of it. But what databases do is give you the power to be able to store structured data, give you better reporting and things of that nature. So I just want to take a different approach to how I would look at the situation. So let's head over into the solution that I built. I called this shift scheduler. And you'll notice that for the main presentation layer, you know, it's a little bit blockier here. I really like the way that Brian's solution looks, but the Kanban does afford us the ability to have, you know, this by uh, our, our days of the week that we have. And then we've got to buy the employees as well. I didn't fill in all the data. But before we get too in depth into that, I want to show kind of how we structured that data. And so if I head into my grid view, I think this will give us a little bit better of an idea of how I'm looking at this. Now you'll notice right off the bat that we've got two different apps. And the reason I do this is because each app represents that single record type. And with employees, it's not just their name, right? There's information about their, those employees, their preferences of when they're able to work. We want to store the information about what they're being paid. And that belongs, I believe, as attributes of the employee record, where that can be referenced by the shift that they're working. And so you'll notice here inside the shifts, I've got the actual times and dates. We're running this in a date range field, although you could have a start and end date if you prefer. We're also using a formula to calculate that time from the shift itself. So that's automatically being calculated. And then I've separated out to have the location or essentially the status of what's going on. So I've got an employee who's working at the bar. This one's working at the kitchen. It is also tracking things like if they're off or on call. And then this, instead of just being a text field of their name, is linking us to the employee record. So if I go to the employee record, again, I didn't fill out the data for all of these employees, but this is where uh, we do have their scheduled hours, which is a formula, and this is coming in and calculating. Them. But we can also store their preference data. So for example, they might want to only work or we might only want them to work a certain number of hours per week. We can store that here. We can figure out their hourly rate and store that here and calculate those same things. But we can also do things like identify the dates that they are not able to work. 
So maybe they have preferences of certain days that they can't work, and we can take that into consideration when we're scheduling. I also have a formula here that is taking that max number of hours and subtracting that against the scheduled hours so we can see if they are over-resourced. So as we're going about actually scheduling those individuals, this ends up being a lookup back to this data. So we're not duplicating it. It's referencing it from over here. And this lets us know, oh, they're actually over-scheduled, which would help us as we're scheduling them to be able to reduce the number of hours or increase the number of hours or whatever we need to do, but keep that data front and center. So this, again, is a grid view, which is a little bit more common as you get started with things. But I do think that Kanban provides a nice view to be able to see the entire set of shifts for that week by the employees. And so what I did is I created a Kanban. And you'll notice that we've got the ability to group vertically, like you would expect when we typically have a status, and that's when we drag the card between. But SmartSuite also gives you the ability to have them grouped vertically and horizontally. And so you'll notice that I have the different employees here. You can see I've got a column grouping by date, and I've got the swim lane grouping by employee. And for a lot of clients that I've worked with recently, as they're trying to understand how best to utilize relational databases and are coming from spreadsheets, this is helpful for them because it gives us the database integrity and kind of the structure of setting it up, but still provides a visual interface that feels more like that spreadsheet that they're used to. And so here I can see that summary data of the person, their shift, the location that they're at, and we can see that for a given week. And then I've got a filter applied to be able to see that by an individual shift week. So on next week, we could just update that to see next week's shifts instead. I hope this has been helpful for you to see a couple different approaches to how we can solution for the same exact problem. Brian, kudos to you for putting together the opposite solution. I think it's been really fun to take a look at how we can approach this. If you have any questions about your own implementation of SmartSuite, reach out to us at automationhelpers.com, where we're offering a free 30-minute consultation.